Hello, everybody, and it's certainly a pleasure to be able to address you in this way when we're not able to gather together as was originally planned for this conference. And thank you very much to the organisers for facilitating the possibility to have these short recordings and share some input. My name's Heather Roy, and I'm Secretary General of Eurodiakonia. And Eurodiakonia is a European network of social service organisations and social justice organisations who are active with a Christian identity and work in 32 countries around mm -hmm. Europe. So we're not only active in the EU, but indeed much, much further afield. And for many of our friends from Germany, you will very well know Diakonia Deutschland and their activity um, in Germany and indeed in, in Brussels. So what we've been asked to reflect on today is on um, the issue around minimum income and what do we need to see when it comes to uh, any discussions on minimum income at EU level. And this is a topic that Eurodiaconia has been following for a long time, probably for about the last uh, ten, 10 years indeed, because minimum income is at the heart, frankly, of any realistic impactful approach at addressing poverty and social exclusion in the European Union. For Eurodiaconia, we always want to go back a step and talk about dignity and talk about people's own autonomy and able to uh, live their own lives in the way that they choose to do so. We are also very interested in questions around inequalities and what is it that prevents people from being full participants in their society. And it's for sure that access to adequate social protection or to adequate employment um, wages and indeed to accessible, affordable, quality social services are part of that big package that people need in order to participate in society. And a fundamental element of that is ensuring that people have an income and an income that allows them to be those full participants in society. Participants who are not having to uh, choose between feeding their children and paying electricity bills. But it also goes further. Participation is also about being able to do the same as everybody else. Being able to uh, have your kids go to a sports club and take part in lessons or music lessons, or ensuring that you can pay for a birthday present when one of your kids is going to a birthday party. So for us, participation is what we want to see. Dignity, participation, people's own empowerment. So when we think about minimum income, we really want to stress the idea of adequacy of minimum income. Not so that people will just survive, but so that people will thrive, that people will be able to do things, take part in social, cultural life. So what does that actually mean when we get to look at minimum income? Well, I think what we have seen across the EU is that in general, minimum income schemes are not adequate. They do not provide a level of income that allows for that participation that we've talked about. There are huge variances in the level of minimum income across the EU. We know that particularly in the Nordic countries, the level of minimum income is much higher, even on a percentage level, compared to minimum income in some parts of Eastern Europe. We also recognise that there's, there's questions about the accessibility of minimum income. Who gets access to minimum income? and on what basis? What conditionality is there when it comes to getting minimum income? And one of the things that has always troubled us in Eurodiaconia is the discrepancy between what's seen as a young person's minimum income and an older person or adult's minimum income, particularly um, in the under 25 category. We feel that minimum income should be fairly applied to everyone, and that just because you're under 25 or 26, depending on the country, you shouldn't be getting less of a minimum income. 
minimum income should be individually related. And then additional benefits such as for children, perhaps for housing, um, for other uh, needs would come on top of that. So what do we need to see, see happen? Well, we, we know that there are many, many discussions continuing about whether or not the EU can have a directive on minimum income schemes in member states. And there's probably no need to rehearse the various legal arguments that are about a treaty basis of having minimum income directive. But we also are pretty realistic in knowing that most member states are not that keen anyway on the EU setting any levels when it comes to minimum income. For example, using the 60% relative poverty benchmark as a level for minimum income. We're also aware that there are many discussions also around the relationship between minimum income and minimum wages that minimum income should not prevent people from looking for work. But we have to think very carefully about that. There are some people for whom accessing the labour market is just not really a possibility. Do we value them less than people who work? Why should it be that if you can't work, you're expected to live on less and on an amount that perhaps does not encourage participation and empowerment and dignity. So what we would like to see is that we reflect on a system that ensures that everybody has the potential to live in the way that they should do. And that means we have to look at the level of minimum wages as well as looking at the level of minimum income. And there needs to be some sort of discussion with social partners, with NGOs, with social service providers, with governments, and with people who experience poverty themselves to talk about what are the right levels and adequacy when it comes to minimum income as well as minimum wages. But if we take minimum income on its own for now, imagining that we can't have a directive on minimum income at EU level, I think we could do a lot at EU level at looking at what adequacy means looking at what it is that a minimum income should cover. We could also look at how minimum income schemes could be benchmarked against how they lift people out of poverty and social exclusion. And guidance could be given to member states on how to set the level of minimum income and indeed the level of minimum wages and then support given to those member states who are currently unable to reach an adequate level of minimum income. Give them support through the European semester, through other um, policy levers that the European Commission has to raise the level of minimum income to the level that it should be at. The second thing we can do at EU level, I believe, is to look at the accessibility of minimum income and look at questions around barriers to minimum income and, as I said earlier, conditionalities when it comes to minimum income. And that's where the debate can get a little bit uh, tricky because you could take that as saying, well, we just make it universal, like a universal basic income. That's not what I'm proposing. What we want to focus on at Eurodiaconia is making sure that all those who are eligible to receive a minimum income are able to get it quickly with as little bureaucracy as possible and with clarity on what can and cannot be done during the time that minimum income is received. So those are perhaps the main points I, I would like to share and I would like to make. Um, a lot of this to us is about a will. It's about a willingness. If we believe that everybody has the right to live in dignity, to be able to participate in communal life and shouldn't have to scratch around for the basic means of living every day, then we should be able to push forward and actually achieve a standard on minimum income across the EU that allows everybody to live in that way. We can't enforce it legally, is what we understand from the Commission at the moment. 
but we can use things like the European semester, country-specific recommendations, structural reform programmes, the new programmes that will be coming as a result of the COVID-19 crisis to support and guide member states to reaching that level of minimum income that's needed and to resolve any questions around accessibility and conditionality of that income. So I'm going to stop there because I know that we're going to hear from lots of other speakers and there'll be other videos to watch. But I hope that just gives you an understanding of what we're thinking around minimum income and that we look forward to working with you and other like-minded organisations and ensuring that we work for that participatory, inclusive and empowering approach that enables everybody to live with dignity. Thank you.